Hello everyone, my name is Miller and welcome back to yet another Fast and Furious finale, where I will do a rundown on the final chapter of the latest Fast and Furious storyline, where the final reward is a pretty sweet Dodge Charger Daytona. I will be going over each lock-in, discussing the difficulty, the return of the other events and to why this series is perhaps a bit undervalued by some people and I'll show a max tune for the Daytona, which again has a needle drop but is a sub 7 seconds car. In the next couple of days I will also try to make a season max style video with some of the cars with some great AR details because the Charger Daytona on the inside is crazy. But now for today the finale so let's get straight into it. So after the first two mini finales the big finale has finally made it to the game and to my surprise a lot earlier than I thought. I would have expected two more events like the previous ones because I had in mind that you would need to win four cars and use those four in the finale. But in the end here we have it and I just want to say I kind of enjoyed the story behind it. But there is something most people overlooked here. Whereas in the past you would have to buy 5 cars, use them in small events and then build up to the finale and win a car, here you had to buy indeed 4 or 5 newer cars to win 4 cars in total. But that is of course if you already had some of the cars. If like me you have participated in each event, in the past you have some extra cars, you only had to buy the new S2000 for the first event to win the Yetta, and for the second event the S15 and the Subaru to win the EVO 9. And now together with the Escort you can win the Charger Daytona. With there also being an EVO Cup afterwards which will reward you the Toyota Supra for a second time in case you did not have it. So that means you had to buy 4 or 5 cars and then you could win 4 cars out of it. For newer players it is a more different story as you would need to buy 8 cars in total to win 3 or 4. So it's a bit more debatable on the viability of this event. This is a series that really favours veterans and in case you were not able to finish the build up events, no worries, you can continue where you left off as the event returned with extra 12 days to run them. Though I'm confused with the crates, why only two crates giving Nissan and Mazda parts? When I have lock-ins, of which one is the Lycan, Eclipse and the S2000 and I need parts for those? As for how it works, it's a bit confusing, so apparently it depends on the lock-in or something. It starts off with the GTR. But then if you lock in the Lycan it switches for some reason. But what if you're stuck at some point, can't you just get crates? It's super confusing, why not make it simple? Just open up support crates like two tabs for each event. Why they gotta make it so hard sometimes? And in case you don't have a Lycan though, good news, you can buy now one for gold coins which is a nice deal. Anyways back to the events now and in case you haven't finished the other two, I made two videos on these in the past already. And I expect the times to be identical, so you can check those out for tunes and hardest times. For today I will only be covering the finale, a 70 races rundown with loads of speed traps and relay races, but for 4 lock-ins. The total rewards come down to 1,910,000 cash, 350 gold coins which is quite low for such a big event, 980 bronze keys, nice, 15 gold keys, 8 uncommon, 9 rare and 9 epic fusion parts. 5 stage 6 parts which is also sweet and well spread, later more on those, accompanied by 2500 green elite parts, 80 blue, 40 red and 4 yellow slash legendary parts. And the final prize obviously being the Charger Daytona which has been buffed to a sub 7 seconds car. Like usual I will try to do a rundown of the various lock-ins and discuss their difficulties starting off from a stage 5 perspective. Before I start though I want to thank user Osito Pugito, I think like that, for putting together this overview on which cars are used on which race, it's super useful to speed up the recording process for such an event. The first lock-in is for the 1970 Dodge Charger RT and as the car is the same one in the first movie and has been rebuilt for the fourth one, they allowed us to use both of them in the event and I'm very pleased with that. The one from the first movie has been in game for a long time now but has always been a finale reward if I recall correctly, meaning ownership is rather low. But now if you already had it you can save yourself some money so you don't have to spend another $22 or $28 in a bundle if you want to go for the Escort. As the majority of the players will be new, I'll be using the one from the fourth movie as it is the newer car. For the stage 6 race on this one it comes super early meaning it's super easy to beat where you have to run faster than a 13.623 which for a tier 5 car is a cakewalk. As for the hardest time and speed trap they were both beatable on stage 5 for this car which is pretty neat. And here I mean stage 5 fully fused of course. I use the same tune for both, tune for the hardest race on 55 and the speed trap. Careful with the needle drop though.
Onto the second lock-in and here you will have to spend some money as you will have to buy the Ford Escort Mark 1 RS1600 from the 6th movie and this is the new fastest non-elite tier 4 car and the second fastest overall as I somehow managed to run a 9.825 on a test run. But a 9.7 is definitely possible here for this little car. This one can be bought either through the previously mentioned bundle or separately for $16.99. Personally I think it's worth it. Ford Fusion parts are super easy to get and you get two stage 6 parts without requiring two more lock-ins. The first stage 6 part comes on race 11, which you can beat stock basically, and then a second one on race 17 if you can run faster than a 15.758, which again should be rather easy. For the hardest races then, again, this can be beaten using stage 5. The hardest solo race came rather early on race 39, requiring only to be faster than a 13.159. And then later on on race 67, the hardest speed trap was also beatable on stage 5 using the same tune. Time for the slowest car of the bunch in the third lock-in, being the Volkswagen Jetta. And this one cannot be bought but only be won through the FNF1 event, which has returned in case you did not finish it. Maxed out, this car is capable of running a 10.491, being marginally slower than the other cars. The stage 6 race here again is kind of easy, requiring a 16.903, which I don't think anyone will really struggle with. And to my surprise, same story as before, this car can beat the event on stage 5. The hardest solar race came on race 58, requiring a 12.003 and then a final speed trap later on. But once again, using the same tune for both, I was able to blast through. Tune and races. The last one then is the APR Mitsubishi Lancer EVO 9, the second favourite of the bunch. But just like the Yetta, you cannot buy it, you'll have to win it through the FNF2 event. Maxed out it's good for a 9.919, which was before the Escort the fastest non-elite customs car. Again, stage 6 race was super easy, we're almost stuck because you have to beat a time of an 18.81. And for the difficulty, hardest race you can beat on stage 5, fully fused, but the speed trap on race 69, you won't. For this one you will need some parts. I'll show a stage 5 tune for the solar race, followed by the speed trap where I had to install two extra stage 6 parts, body and nitrous. So here you might expect to require 3 or 4 even, if you don't have any good ones.
Once that is all over, obviously the last race will be the relay race. And for this one, you might have to retune your cars to the quarter mile and install a stage 6 part on each and one of them that you want along the way because it's gonna get a bit rougher. Once you beat this, you will get your hands on the Charger Daytona, which is not only a massive car, but also a beast of a car with a sub 7 seconds time, but with a horrible shift pattern and again with a needle drop. Tune and my best attempt. But that's not all, after this there should also be an EVO Cup like event, like we had with the flip car a couple of weeks ago, where any 5 Fast and Furious cars can be used to win Brian Supra, which is super sweet, but don't underestimate this event. It will be quite hard, to a point where you will need almost maxed cars. Possibly because on my dummy account I did not complete the FNF1 event, this one does not show up on the map after completing this event. Perhaps it might work for you. With that all covered, I can say it's a pretty good event. 12 days of crates with a free one every 24 hours should at least guarantee you a second or a third stage 6 part for each car. I expect issues only to happen with the EVO 9 because the final race is a bit tougher. But other than that, I'm quite happy with the series. It cost me in total 4 new cars and I got 7 in the end. Is it worth it? That is up to you. This will eat a lot of in-game cash if you still have to start it and have to upgrade the cars, definitely if you also have to do the FNF1 and FNF2. From bare scratch, I wouldn't do it. If you already got some of the cars, I'd say go for it. I had fun with it and except for the EVO, fusion parts should also not be too hard to get, which is also crucial in such an event. And with that said, I will close off for today. If you enjoyed the video, you know what to do, hit that like button, subscribe for more content like this, my name is Miller, see you around and keep racing.